Hello, um, I'm, I'm David Frayne, I'm the director of The Cured. And I'm Sam Keeley, and I'm the star yeah, of The Cured. Yeah, Would you call star. it that? Yeah. yeah, I like you today, so you're the star. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we're going to interview each other, because why not? Yeah. Uh, so, Sam, what, why did you want to do The Cured? Um, I wanted to do The Cured because you wrote a very good script. Thanks very much. It was good. And uh, it scared... It scared me to think that I could, you know, possibly mess this part up hugely, and that challenge there really made me want to go for it. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Nice. Mm -hmm. I want the cast Sam because I saw him in a few things Raw back Jeez, in the day. Yeah. But you were great, and um, what Richard did, and I saw he's an amazing uh, quality um, and kind of vulnerability. That, I mean, I think that the, the, the tricky thing with, Se with, with Sen and the character is that he has to do a lot by saying very little. So you need somebody who can really, really um, project that. Mm. So, so that's why I wanted you. That's and I like, I'd and, say and, I, and I like your hair. That helps. That's good. Good, 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 good. <laughs> yeah, I never actually knew that. I didn't know that, like what work it was. I've always but wondered, but like I've seen you. I mean, I think in Ireland you see everything, don't you? Yeah, you do. Yeah, it's true. true. It's you, true. You, you track certain actors. But yeah. It's true. What what scene were you most nervous about? Because you you've ah. obviously con you've really drawn up like a really beautiful f story here right. in a genre that we all know so well. But there must have been one that you were like a bit nail biting. There was a few. Um, big nail-biting scenes. There's one amazing scene, uh, I think it's the only scene in the whole film we have you, Tom and Ellen all together. It's that yeah. dinner scene and it's really intense and it's great. And I think I was most nervous about that. Mm. And we shot in the first week and just building up to that because it's a, it's a huge turning point in the film and you're all kind of have to do so much in it with, with so little. <laughs> yeah. um, so that, that was probably the one I was most excited about and nervous about because you have, you know, three of your leads yeah. giving it socks. What was your most nerve-wracking scene? Um, I think the scene where I have to break the news to Ellen uh, of the subject that we will not broach in this interview. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I think like it's, that was, because in a way like, for me as a character, that's the point where he comes clean and he finally says what he needs to say. Um, and I think we, you know, you were great in that you kind of avoided even, you know, we knew where we wanted to go with that, but you avoided talking about it and letting it get muddled and we just kind of mm. shot it. But that was terrifying because in a way, me and Ellen didn't even really talk about the outcome of that scene or what the prep for that would be. So it was like this big elephant in the room. Yeah. That was also the scene when we, when we premiered the film in TIFF back in September. That was a scene, it's a really quiet, chilling scene when mm. the fire alarm started going off. Don't talk to and me. Everyone got evacuated from the cinema. 1500, like 1500 people. people got evacuated. And I was like, I don't remember putting a clax in there. Yeah. And yeah, that in was the, yeah. like the worst moment in the entire film to have an evacuation. Also, the best because. They want to come back and find the answer? Yeah. yeah. Because so if it had happened after that scene, they would have all went home. They had to take the end. Yeah. Like 1500 people yeah. waited outside and yeah. then went back in and. Did like rolled the thing back? Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. otherwise we would have been. Yeah, it was a good outcome to. It a, was to a crappy event. <laughs> but otherwise, that was an amazing. It was like the best premiere we could have had. Yeah, it was. Um, so yeah. What's the first thing you did um, when you found out Ellen had signed on? What's the first thing you did? I was really convinced it was one of my mates. I think I mentioned before when yeah. I was a kid. My mate, when I was younger, my 20s, feels like being a kid now. Mm. Uh, my mates pranked me once, ringing me saying I won a film award that I didn't win, <laughs> which is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And I was so excited for about 10 minutes on the phone. Oh, this is the amazing, I get to make my dream. And uh, so I was pretty sure it was them just doing that in a more mature state. Yeah. So, um, so I was, I was, it was pure disbelief. And then it was kind of texting on my mates going, don't tell anybody but Alan. So by the time I said don't tell anybody, everyone in our oh, Yeah, 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 um, of course. So yeah, so yeah, I think it was disbelief then just told everyone. <clears throat> How was it for you acting with Ellen or meeting Ellen? Uh, it was very intimidating yeah. because everyone knows her work and yeah. she's class. She's um, class. And then you meet her and you realize she's a really normal human being because we make gods out of these people, out of these people, you know, like we, we like film gives people a god complex sometimes and you know to us mere mortals you kind of feel weird it's being given me a god complex yeah fucking has dave i didn't want to say anything <laughs> like it's just, you know <laughs> but um no um yeah no but like it was great like it you know it really made me step up my game and want to 
re just really perform. But I, I had the luxury of time on my side in terms of that being ready for the character. But she was just great, wasn't she? She was mm, just she was wonderful great. and yeah. kind of like net. It wasn't a peep over. I think she was like the quietest person on set. It was great. Yeah, she just gets on with the and job. She's, really sweet. Yeah. yeah, and she's one of those people like I've met like very few actors in my short career that like when you're doing a scene, if you're not careful, they'll pull you out of the scene because you're watching them. Yeah. Killian Murphy does it a lot. Like I've worked with him twice now yeah. and twice he's done that to me on a job where I've like been in a scene with him and I find myself watching him and going like uh <laughs> you know, and like you get pulled over. Yeah. Um but Ellen has that quality where she really is able to just draw you in and so subtly as well. Yeah. Yeah. She's brilliant. She's great. Um what did you I know you have a fear of blood. I do. Yeah, I do. So I don't know why I made this. Um, yeah, yeah. That I. I mean, I try to make it. It's not that. I think it sounds gorier than it actually is, though. Yeah. Because I think the sound design is amazing, but there's not that much. There, there was, was the, a day. There was a really horrible day where you were covered in blood for yeah. the day, and like you were proper full infected with Tom. <coughs> and I thought I was getting really sick and queasy from the blood, but it turned out <laughs> I had the vomiting bug. Yeah. Along with half the crew, <laughs> so I was literally going off to Team America up the bathroom <laughs> and then come back and like, okay, so just more, more this time. Yeah. You so. held it together very well. It was, it was very. Crazy. Yeah, I kept the vomit until the last half. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was that was a fun day. Yeah, yeah. Um, who's your favorite actor, and who inspires you the most? Uh, I go through like different phases, you know. Mm. Um, I like a lot of. Uh, I don't really like many people my age. Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like I kind of because in a way. I've always just liked older actors okay, and yeah. actresses, you know what I mean? Like, not like there are wonderful actors out there that are my age, I'm not, you know what I mean? But yeah, in terms yeah, of yeah, like yeah. people that I draw influence from, it's always older people. I don't know why that is. Um, so like, I, I, when I saw Sean Penn in Mystic River, um, Clint Eastwood's film, I, I loved the power that he commanded in that part at the loss of his daughter. Um, yeah, I mean, I go through phases, you know what I mean? And I would really, like, diligently watch people's work. I was, I was a huge fan of Heath Ledger when he was yeah, up and course, about, yeah. and I remember being devastated. And yeah. I wasn't even acting at that point, and I came down to the kitchen, and my mum was like, Heath Ledger's after dying. And I remember my heart broke, and I yeah. didn't have any connection to a film world or anything, but yeah. I just remember being really saddened by that. Um, so, yeah, I go through, I go through phases. Um, what, at what point in your life did you know you wanted to be filmmaker um when i was 12 um i like i mean i grew up in kildare so we didn't have a great cinema we had one called oscars which was just very small and sticky yeah um, oh, and oscars <laughs> yes <laughs> oscars in Newbridge. yes um but we had a great extra vision and blockers had a really big world cinema section so i just devoured all the vhs's and like i was discovering things like three colors red at a really young age and all these great films and then terminator 2 blew my mind so when i was 12 i wanted to be a filmmaker but i didn't know how to do it so i just thought you just watch films and yeah then, yeah yeah so i slowly figured out at some point that's what you wanted to do and you wanted to do it then i figured out how to do it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 so a young age yeah wow yeah. 12 is young. Yeah, what age did man. you want to be an actor? I was kind of forced into acting. Um, that doesn't sound nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was a singer-songwriter in school and I failed the leave insert. So my prospects weren't great. And I d recorded a demo for an album. I had 10 songs, roughly, we kind of recorded. And my school guidance counsellor, Teresa Burke, shout out to Teresa, changed my life forever. She brought me in. Uh, to the office and she made me go through like courses that I could possibly do with my you know handful of points that I had Oof. from the leaving cert and um, <clears throat> I wanted to work for the UNHCR and build houses in you know third world countries but you needed maths and maths is the one I failed <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't going to do that um, and then she was like what if you went and did a drama degree then you could you know possibly further that and you, you could teach drama somewhere or you could facilitate drama or you could like be a film critic, like you could do all this, all these avenues would open yeah. up and you didn't necessarily need math to do that. And I had to audition to get in uh, to this school and I'd never acted before in my life. And I learned a two minute monologue from Philadelphia, Here I Come, um, which wow. was the play we were reading at the time in school and I'd never read a play before. Wow. Um, and I got in to this course and once I was in, I got bitten by the bug and fell madly in love and I read everything that they gave me and I watched everything that I could and I had been watching movies all my life and I had always 
had a draw to that. Um, and then I, six months in to that, or like I think it was like eight months into that course, I, I went to an open audition in my hometown. I was working in Extra Vision at the time, uh, at the weekends, and I booked. I ended up booking the second lead in this Irish feature film. Is that Rebecca Daly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the other side of sleep. Yeah. yeah, that was my first first ever acting gig. Yeah, and um, the college uh, wanted to fail me and like make me repeat the year if I went and did the film. Nice. So yeah. uh, I was told I wasn't called to be an actor, <gasps> um, and I wasn't ready. So I told your man to fuck it. And I went and uh, got an agent and kept working. So Great. Like, yeah. And why did you start, when did you move to London first? Yeah, uh, recently enough, man. Like I, was li I lived in Dublin for five years and then um, I didn't have any representation here all of a sudden and I had representation in England and I was going like three times a month mm. to London. And then I got this slew of jobs. I did like seven feature films in one year and I lived out of the same bag for that whole year and I ended up landing in London and I just kind of was hanging about there for a little while and I still spend my time intermittently there and stuff, so. Nice. Yeah, what about you? When did you come to London actually? You were there a while, I, right? No, I've only, I, I was back and forth for five or six years and then I moved two years ago, but then I had to come back for the film. And I, I moved for for the other reason, love, not not work. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Which is the only other two reason reason you can travel. So yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I think I'm officially there two years, but I spend seem to be back here all the time. Yeah. Which, yeah. yeah. What was it like for you? Because it's uh, home soil. Um, working with Tom Vaughan Lawler, the ledge. That was really nice. You know, um, I don't work in Ireland very often. Yeah. Uh, but Tom is like a national treasure, as you said. Mm. You know, to quote you, um, and he is, and he's. You know, everyone knows him. Everyone knows his face, and. Um, I think he's a wonderful actor and we all know what he does so well, yeah. you know, like that trademark kind of nice guy that will like knife you, you know, <laughs> like in the same breath. Um, and it was lovely to see him be that in front of my eyes. And yeah. and also when I was in that space of playing Senan as well to see how, <clears throat> how I would react to that in that moment, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, but he's great, like, and, and it's so funny because he's the nicest guy he's so in nice. the world. He's so nice. That ever put on shoes. Like, he's the nicest guy, he is. isn't he? He's kind of like Dublin's Mother Teresa. <laughs> it's like, he's so nice. He's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the relationship between you guys in the film. It's amazing. Like, you really buy you falling under his wing and yeah. kind of being manipulated by him in such a kind of menacing way. It's quite traumatic it is the and having to turn away from that as well yeah. like, you know especially like with the way you built Sen and you built him in a way that he has a support system in Tom's yeah, character yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. and so to tear from that is like such a huge thing you and, know? and they're the only because they were infected together so they're the only people who kind of understand what the other one went through yeah you know they're part of the same kind of pack and yeah you know, Tom's the alpha so yeah 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 what's next for David Fran? Um we haven't had lunch yet no <laughs> um, I, um, I, I'm going to do a comedy next because um, when you live with zombies for a while you really need to do a comedy so I'm going to do a yeah. comedy called Beard Set in Kildare in Beards. the 90s can you say what in that's Newbridge. about? in <laughs> Newbridge <laughs> <laughs> can you say uh, what it's about? it's about two uh, two teenagers a boy and a girl who are both gay who decide to be each other's beards in order to stop all the taunts of speculation around them so that's it's class. a plutonic love story about <laughs> these two teens on the cusp of adulthood that's deadly yeah cool so no zombies no, no zombies. what's what's next for Mr. Keely um, I just finished a film in Canada a World War 2 film um, about four soldiers that get lost in the Italian Alps in 1944 true story mm. and I play a young man with PTSD no less um, and that was amazing. That was that was just such a brilliant experience. I shot that with um, myself and Alexander Ludwig, who does Vikings here in Dublin, and um, Franco Nero. It's like Italian yeah, movie star. He's unbelievable. He's the original Django yeah. Unchained, or just Django, I guess. Just it was. Django. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that that's that's coming out this year, which I'm really proud of. And then I, I I'm sh next in June, I'm shooting a film called Adventures of a Mathematician. That's like. It's about an amazing the, premise. Yeah, it's cool. It's like about the young scientists in Los Alamos in World War Two that came up with the um, algorithm for the hydrogen bomb, mm. and not knowing what it was going to be used for, and then when it was like it was it was implemented and used in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they had no idea, mm. and it's ha kind of how that affected their lives, and they 
the aftermath of that. And um, I play a guy called Jack Kalklin, who's an American scientist who, you know, ends up having a fucking horrible life after this happens to him. Um, so cheery. Yeah, yeah. Cheery yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Light, light comedy. Yeah, exactly. Um, the film is out, The Cured is out tomorrow, which is probably today, which is the... Friday the 20th. Friday the 20th. Um, and go see it. Yes. Before Avengers takes over the world. <laughs> <laughs>